and I are in the Everglades, which is a protected wetland area in southern Florida. And having a rescued alligator at home, we wanted to see what they looked like in the wild. So we are out trying to find American alligators so we can share some cool facts about them with you. And we just came across our first one, which is behind me. Here we have a beautiful American alligator who is using a uh, rock as a nice pillow. It kind of reminds me of Rex using her buoy as a pillow at home. And just like Rex, she's given us a nice toothy smile. Herping doesn't have to involve bushwhacking or trudging through knee-deep grasses or weeds. For American alligators, it's as simple as finding a gravel road with freshwater channels on either side of it and just walking down and peering through the plants into the water. We're actually finding quite a few American alligators just in the water beyond these trees and other plants, but they're rather hard to catch on camera because of all of the plants in the way. So we're um, trying to find the best ones to film to show you guys that are easier for you to see. Oh, there's one. He's on land. Uh, you can only see his tail, but that's a big tail. I can only imagine what the rest of him looks like. Unfortunately, we didn't see many alligators yesterday, and I think that's partially because the person ahead of us on the road was throwing sticks at the alligators that were visible, which is first off illegal, and second just inappropriate. It's just rude. To, it's not good at all. You don't want to disturb the wildlife down here. So we're on day two, and we're hoping to see more, and we're off to a great start because we already have our first alligator of the day. This is a beautiful adult American alligator. I'd say she's probably around six to seven-ish feet long, which is full grown for the females. Females usually get around eight-ish feet long as adults, but males get a little bit bigger. The male American alligators grow to around 11 to 12, 13 feet long with a few outliers that get even bigger than that. But both sexes mature when they are about six feet long. These magnificent animals prefer slower moving waters in marshes and in swampy areas, which is why the Everglades is a perfect environment for them. However, you will also find them in other bodies of water like streams, small rivers, and small lakes. They have such cute puppy dog faces. Yeah, they do. This isn't an actual alligator, but it's a sign that they're nearby. You can see this is a commonly used path uh, through the weeds that they come out and bask in the light on land over here. And then actually a little bit further down is a really nice slide. And of course they're called slides because the alligators will just slide right into the water when they need to take off. But this is why the the wetlands are so essential for their well-being. They need both a wet area to cool off in, or if it's cold, the water actually stays pretty warm and they can stay in the water to warm up. And they also like having a dry bank area to kind of bask on in the sun. Speaking of slides, here's a wonderful example of one. And there's an alligator nearby. Females tend to stick towards kind of a smaller home territory, whereas males can have a territory upwards of two square miles. Both sexes, though, will increase that territory come breeding season. When females are ready to lay their eggs, they will build a nest that's around 8 to 10 feet in diameter and upwards of 3 feet high, where they will deposit their eggs in the middle of it and cover up the eggs with mulch and other uh, nesting material. And both the warm temperatures and the decaying plant matter around the eggs will keep those eggs warm and humid during incubation. After about two months, the baby alligators will start making a high-pitched grunting sound from within the eggs, and that notifies the mother to come over to the nest that she has been defending for the past two months and uncover the eggs by pushing away that nesting material and then she will carry each one of those babies to a safe body of water. When they hatch, babies are only six to eight inches long, but they're carnivorous too. However, due to their small size, they have to eat smaller prey items. So hatchling alligators will eat more uh, insects, they'll eat crayfish, they'll eat snails, and small fish. Due to their small size, about 80% of them fall victim to predators, including wading birds, raccoons, bobcats, and more. Thankfully though, they will live with their mother for the first two to three years of their life. The mother will help protect them and help them find food, and they grow about a foot every year, so they're about two to three feet long by the time they leave their mother and venture off on their own, which gets them out of that prey size for most of the predators they'll come across in the wild. 
Of course, as they get bigger and become adults, they'll eat progressively larger prey items. Adult alligators, like the one behind me here, will eat larger things like the wading birds that predated on them when they were babies, so they kind of get their revenge. They also eat things like fish and mammals. They'll eat other reptiles, turtles even. They're able to crack the shell of turtles. Or, or swallow them whole, they're able to do that too, as long as they're not too big. So as long as it's made of protein, and it fits in their mouth, an alligator will eat it. The sex of the baby is actually determined by the temperature that the egg is incubated at. 88 degrees and cooler will produce females, 90 degrees and warmer will also produce females, and right at that sweet spot at 89 degrees, about 75% of the babies will be males, but still not all of them will be males. So it's definitely biased towards producing more females. Crocodilians are one of the smartest, if not the smartest, group of reptiles. They have learned to congregate underneath rookeries during breeding season. Rookeries are collections or groups of nests from wading birds like egrets and storks and um, herons, things like that. And when these birds are breeding, they create their nests over bodies of water, and they're a few feet above the water level, and their babies are pretty cute, they're kind of ugly at first, but when these baby birds grow up and they fledge and they're looking so adorable and they take that first leap of faith and they fly for the first time, if they don't go up and instead they go down, they get snapped up by the alligators. Alligators have even been found to use tools to lure in their prey. During the nest building season for the wading birds, uh, especially wood storks, the, some alligators have learned <laughs> to find a twig or a small branch and balance it on their snout while they stay submerged underneath in the water. And when the bird swoops down to grab that twig, the alligator reaches out of the water and grabs the bird and eats it. So as you can imagine, a big portion of their diet would be wading birds, especially during the springtime breeding season. If the alligator is so successful that it collects so much food that it becomes full and still has extra prey to eat, uh, they will actually take that food and stash it away for later. Now, a lot of people believe that they stash their food to let it rot, and they prefer the, the taste of rotting meat. But that is not necessarily true. There are two theories out there as to why they stash their food, the first of which being that they're just trying to hide it for themselves and prevent another alligator from eating that because it's their food, you know. We know how greedy alligators can be. And the second theory is that they hide it to attract scavengers like turtles or crabs or crayfish to start eating that food. And then the alligator gets a buffet of fresh food that it can then eat instead of the old food that it stashed. So it's another way of luring in fresh prey. This just goes to show you how smart these animals really are. It's a shame that Rex was poached from the wild as a hatchling. This, the Everglades, is where Rex, our rescued alligator, initially came from. And she sadly can't be released because she's been in captivity for so long and she was kept so improperly that she is permanently stunted and has some other health issues. She just wouldn't survive here. But this is what she should be like. This is what Rex would be like if she was left in the wild the entire time. Another thing alligators are excellent at is holding their breath. When they are actively pursuing their prey, Hunting sessions underwater will last anywhere between 10 and 20 minutes before they come out for a breath of air. If they are sitting and waiting for their prey, they can hold their breath for up to two hours underwater. And if the, if the temperatures are pretty cool or chilly outside, then that slows down their metabolism and oxygen requirements, and therefore they can hold their breath for upwards of eight hours underwater. Believe it or not, alligators have something in common with cats. Inside each of their eyes, behind the retinas actually, is a special piece of reflective tissue called the tapetum lucidum. What this special piece of tissue does is it collects and concentrates all of the available light at night and allows them to see better in the dark. Because of its reflective properties, it also causes their eyes to look like they're shining back at you when you have a flashlight pointed at them. You may have noticed that your cat at home will also reflect its eyes back at you at night, and that's because they also have the tapetum lucidum. Speaking of eyes, alligators also have a second set of eyelids that closes horizontally, and their larger, thicker eyelids that close vertically over top of them. The horizontal eyelids are clear, and it's called the nictitating membrane, and they act like clear goggles to protect their eyes while also allowing them to see when they're hunting underwater. These guys are so good at stealth mode that their heads are arranged in a way to allow their sensory organs, their eyes and their nose, to remain out of the water even when the rest of them is submerged under the water. And it's starting to rain, so we're gonna have to wrap this up. But as you can see, the American alligator is an incredible species of reptile. Just all along this road, they've been left and right just everywhere, it's great. 
Uh, stay tuned at the end of this video. There was one bonus reptile in the crocodilian family that we were not expecting to find. And thank you for watching today's video. We'll see you next time. Now this isn't about alligators, but it's still something we just came across and wanted to point out to you. Behind me, up in that tree, in the branches, hanging is a dead cormorant. And if you look at his beak, it is wound up very tightly with fishing line. This is why it's so important not to leave any fishing line behind or any trash behind when you are fishing or just outside in the wilderness. Bring it back home with you and dispose of it properly because fishing line especially can and does kill wildlife. This is just sad. So behind me is an animal that we did not expect to see on this trip. This is an American crocodile. This is a surprise to us both here. And so we're lucky enough to be able to film it too before he takes off. But you can tell that this is a crocodile and not an alligator for a couple of different reasons. The most obvious ones are that he has a more pointed, narrower snout than alligators do. They have kind of more of a, alligators have more of a U-shaped snout, whereas crocodiles have more of a slender like a-shaped snout, and you can definitely see his teeth more than you can on an alligator. That's because an alligator's upper jaw or its maxilla is bigger than the lower jaw or mandible, so therefore it kind of covers up its lower teeth. A crocodile's jaws, on the other hand, are both roughly the same size, so their teeth poke out in both directions. So you can see them visually more on a crocodile. Wow, just look at how big those dorsal, or how big his scutes are. They really protrude out more than I've noticed the alligators do. And each one of those big bony scutes is actually um, an osteoderm. There's a bony plate underneath each one. So those are extra armor over its body. However, crocodiles are known for being a little bit more sassy than alligators. So we're giving him a little bit more distance than we did the alligators. He also looks really comfy on that ramp. So we want to leave him be. Those are probably the smartest fish we've seen so far. They're too small for the crocodile to bother eating them and there's no way one of their natural predators will get that close to the crocodile to eat them. So they are quite safe there. There's a lot of fish over there. chip in its uncut form. Dick, the alligator reaches out and snaps them. Here we go. Whoops. As you can see, the oh. oh. Did you hear that thud? Totally not gonna let you come out. No, he's not. I don't want to disturb him. Yeah, he's comfy. We'll just leave him there. It's 